now that you know how to wedge simple stuff like rock generators or stuff like that uh, we'll take a look at how you can wedge simulations so in this case I have a simple vellum simulation with a plane of hatch that's dropping onto a box play it and then it goes whoosh and just falls on top of it really basic now what I want to control is my um, this stiffness exponent, right? This stretch stiffness exponent. So you you can already see that it's green because I've already set it up. So if I go inside my top net, I've created this wedge, and I've called it stiffness and made it an integer from minus ten to ten because uh, this parameter is actually a menu that goes from minus ten to ten. And all I've done was expression, toggle expression, uh, sorry, expression, edit expression. And in this box, you can see that I've referenced my stiffness attribute from tops, p at stiffness. Now, if I were to click this wedge now, if I now step through my work items, um, let's pin this, you can see that this is updating now. And I get so I'm going to get a wedge for every single option in this menu. So what I'm going to do now is append a rock geometry output. So this is going to be what I'm going to use to cache the disk. But before that, because I don't want all this data, I'm just going to attribute delete all the stuff I don't want. So oh, I think I could just use a clean. Um, and I'm going to untick this and then remove all the attributes and all the groups. I want this to be light on disk. Now that I have this, I can set my rock geometry output to maybe render a frame range. It's short, so we'll do, maybe we'll do 24, and we'll bring this down a little bit. Now, what I want to call this is obviously something like test develop, and then I'm gonna append the wedge index here. So I'm gonna do at, don't forget back ticks. Um, so it evaluates, if I middle click here, I need um, a work item to be selected here. So I'm gonna pin this again. And if I step through, you can see that it's got two, 15, 10, 19. Nice, cool. Now let's append here a rock fetch. So what the rock fetch does is it basically executes a rock that you would have in your network. Uh, you can have the rock in here, do a rock, rock network. Um, tops comes with uh, wrappers for a lot of the rocks. So if you do rock geometry output, for example, that's a wrapper around a um, Jesus, a rock net here. As you can see, it's just a geometry drop. Um, I prefer to set it up myself. It takes literally five seconds and you actually know what's going on. Uh, so in here, I'm gonna reference my ROP. So I'm gonna say cache, cache sim. And oops, I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna set it to do node by node. Um, this is mostly important if you like have a, a chain of rock fetches like this. You want to set it node by node, especially if the second one depends on this third one, on this uh, first one, sorry. If I were to then feed this into a pop sim, for example, I want all of this to be cached for when it reaches the pop sim or something that's you would usually do, for example, is uh, do a pop sim and then rasterize it and feed that into Paro. In that case, you would want um, the pop sim to be done caching to disk before you feed that into the Pyro sim. And here, uh, right now, we're just going to do this one sim. So, always nice to say reset here on Kirk. Save this. Then output files, I uh, set it to rock node parameters. That's what you want. Um, so it's going to take this 
path and then evaluate you want to do frame range and I actually I should have set this here instead so we're gonna delete this channel and do 24 frames and for sims you want to do all frames in one batch you can do cook frames as a single work item but I don't really recommend it um, it means that instead of getting 24 work items here I would get like no I would actually get 20 work items because I've got 20 wedges and every work item would be 24 frames but then you would have to expand work items and all that stuff so it's easier to then group by the wedge index that you have here uh, right here than to just do cook frames a single work item what I'm gonna do though is in the scheduler you want to go to gel palms and turn the single on single on means that it will run every um, every wedge like serially I don't want to run six sims at once uh, in this case I could because this is fairly light but if you were running six like ocean sims or whatever uh, your computer would not be able to handle that or if you were to do for example if you want to render with Karma XPU and you want to run it through tops then if you don't set a single you will run five renders at the same time and what will happen is that your GPU will fail and then everything will render on the CPU and it's going to take ages and you won't get that XPU speed boost so we're going to turn single on since the 20 is quite a fair bit I'm just gonna what I'm gonna show you is this fills the by range and so I can do uh, work item index or custom attribute even, and I can do wedge index and we'll do 0 to 2 so in this case when I generate the node I get three work items and you see this nice little wire that says okay I'm getting wedge 0, wedge 1 and wedge 2 uh, that's nice but then that means I'm only going to get the first three which is going to be stiffness minus 10, minus 9 and minus 8 which is not really what I want because I want to get a lot of variations so I'm going to sort by what I need to do is so I'm going to sort by a float called rand and I'm going to create this rand attribute here so I'm going to use attribute create and I'm going to do float and I'm call this rand and we'll do rand e at wedge index so now when I click this node I get 20 nodes and they all have a value for rand right it's all different now I can sort these by this rand value so you can see now that this one is now number zero and now I can filter by range and instead of custom attribute we'll just do work item index so this one is zero, this one's one, this one's two so now when I click this node I get index zero but index zero is now minus five index one is now ten and index two is now five so we get random values instead of just going the just getting the lower end of the spectrum now that I have this I can just do we'll click this node and we'll see what happens let's have a look at the result so I'm just going to drop a files up I'm going to copy this pop it in here and to remove this dependency I'm just going to do zero that's going to be my first yeah of course because I put the wedge index so if we go back here you can see that um, uh, sorry here you can see I'm using the wedge index but since I've randomized them all now it's not a zero one and two I'm getting this five index so I probably should here I should have probably used PDG index instead which is so here's our first sim a second sim here then we get this one very similar result so let's come back here and we can do here 
delete this notes output file from disk so I can get all of what I've cached and delete them all and now here I'm gonna do uh, pdg underscore index and now when I click here uh, let's pin this again when I click here I should get 0, 8, etc and so when I click here, I should get 0, 1, and 2, which, make more, which makes more sense. Uh, let's go up one. Uh, actually, stay here. And now we'll click this again. Okay, this is done now. So I can do file. Uh, I'm going to copy this. Paste it here. And then now when I do 0, I should get my first term. Oops. Yeah, okay. Now you can see that uh, I get this issue now. I set it to PDG index, which in this case is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so I'm going to get this issue where, as you can see in my file browser here, it says 0, 1, 2, 3. And, and so what, you, what I'm going to do here to avoid that issue is to create another attribute here based on the PDG index. So I'm going to call this new index, and this is going to be p at PDG index. Now, when I click this node, I'm going to get this new index. It's going to be zero here, one, two, which corresponds to my index. But this is going to be consistent throughout this prop fetching. So let's bin this. I'm going to come back here and now use the new attribute we've created which is new index. Now if we come back here and we generate this node you can see that now I've got all my work items and this is what I should have done before which is check the output which now it's consistent right and Perfect, so now we can just cook this node. Obviously, all of this is um, something you don't need if you just want to run all your wedges at once. Um, what I'm doing here is doing some filtering, so I'll only run three wedges instead of 20 because that's going to take a while to run, and I don't want this video to be six hours long. Let's come back here, and now we do control C here and replace this with zero and now i've got my first wedge sweet and there's actually this sub called file merge and what this does is you can use this index variable set it to in my case it's zero to two because i've got three and then this, the file pattern we're going to use is this and then you can use this variable. So instead of zero, I'm going to do dollar, oops, dollar slice. And this means I get all three um, sims. So index is zero, index is one, index is two. And now if you can, you can see them all here, sort of stacked on it, onto each other. You can see that I've got all my all my sims here on if you didn't know about file merge handy node next time we'll look into maybe do flipbooks of these and then add some custom overlay text on top of it